Welcome to another session with my little tangerine tiger. Now I promised you I wasn't going to see you for another couple of three weeks, but things have moved on a little bit. When I finished filming last time, I stopped and had a bit of a serious think about the problem that we'd found. And that was that we start off with a fairly small beam, two millimeters diameter, and yet at 1.3 meters away, which is not very far, the beam had grown to about 10 millimetres or more. That can't be right, surely. Anyway, I did quite a lot more digging in different areas and let me just show you some of the stuff that I've discovered. It wouldn't be interesting if I knew all of this stuff already. It's the research and the wondering whether or not I've got it wrong that makes it interesting. Now, we've never noticed this problem before on a CO2 laser. Well, it turns out that there's a jolly good reason why we haven't seen this problem before on a CO2 laser. When the beam exits from the tube, it has a certain diameter. In this case, it's five millimeters for this C70 model tube that I've got on that laser machine over there. It's just an ordinary glass tube, model CR70, but it's an SPT tube model C70 with this specification. The beam divergence angle is specified here as 3.1 milliradians. I'm not going to go into the maths of what a milliradian is, but let's just say that it is a measurement of the angle of what they call here divergence. In other words, the beam is growing, but it has an included angle of 3.1 milliradians. It also has a beam quality of less than or equal to 1.1 m squared. Now this m squared value is basically a definition of the quality of the beam in relation to a true Gaussian distribution. So 1.1 is pretty good. So then I start looking around at what this RF laser is capable of doing. And I find several rather interesting facts. First of all, the beam quality is not 1.1, the M squared beam quality is 1.2. It's not as close to a Gaussian distribution as our glass tube. And the beam diameter is 1.8 plus or minus 0.2 of a millimetre. Let's just call it two millimetres for round numbers um, as it exits the RF laser window. Then we look at this thing here called beam divergence angle. And remember what it was before? 3.1 milliradians. Now, it's 7.5. In other words, it's a much wider angle. What does that mean in reality? Well, I got to work with McCad system to produce a, a nice little scaled drawing. And basically for this machine, look, the first mirror here is at about 300 millimeters away from the laser. And the other extreme, right down at the other end of the machine, is around about 1.3 meters away from the start point. Now, we haven't got a complete moving beam in there because the last six or eight inches of that beam, for instance, is beyond mirror three, which is completely static. So we've got 500 millimeters of movement here and 300 millimeters of movement here, roughly. The essence of this story is when we use a RF tube beam, we start off here at the back corner with a beam that is say four millimeters diameter. And by the time we get to the front corner, that beam has grown to over 11 millimeters diameter by the time it gets to hitting the lens. So that's a, that's a massive change. In fact, I think I worked it out at something like about 280% change, something like that. Whereas with the glass tube, we start off at a five millimeter beam and it grows from mm, six millimeters to say nine millimeters. So we've got a three millimeter growth on a five millimeter beam. And that's only about 50% among friends. So there is a huge difference in the performance of these raw beams. So what can we do about it? As I mentioned in the last session that Cloudray sent me something along with this laser tube. They sent this thing. What is this thing? Well, it's got a lens in that end. It's got a lens in that end. And it's called BE for Beam Expander. 
Now, as I cynically said to you in the last session, we don't need a beam expander, it's doing that on its own. <laughs> what we really need is something called a collimator, which basically turns the rays back into a parallel path rather than a diverging path. I went away and did a little bit more reading and research onto beam expanders and it appears that what I've got here is probably going to solve the problem. I say probably, I don't know because this is definitely only called a beam expander but from the reading that I've done if it's got two lenses in it the chances are that it's going to perform something like this. Our expanding beam comes into one lens at this end. It gets expanded to a much larger diameter and then, come out, and then comes out this end as a parallel set of rays. Okay, so this is what the expansion bit is. This is basically an expander and a collimator in one piece of kit, I think but I can't find any information about this anywhere. I've been to the Coherent website. They mentioned these beam expander collimator systems. They don't show me one, but they actually mention it. And they do say that, look, this number here, three times, three X on the end, probably means that I'm gonna take this input beam, which is two millimeters, and I'm gonna expand it out and turn it into a parallel beam, which will be three times the size of the start beam. So that's gonna be six millimeters. So hopefully we may find that we've got a parallel six millimeter beam coming out of here. And there's only one way to find out and that's to try it. So undoubtedly this has got to fit on here somewhere. It's got an M22 thread on it and I was expecting to find, hmm, I was expecting to find an M22 thread on there as well so that I could just go like that and screw it on. I mean presumably this must be standard for this sort of system so it's a possibility that there is a special adapter plate with an M22 thread in it that screws onto there to hold it. I'm going to have to probably ask Cloudray if they have such an adapter plate which they haven't sent me. But of course, in the meantime, I think we need to test this quickly. And so I'm gonna just scrabble around with my CAD system and design something that will hold this just there. Well, here we are about an hour and a half later. And look what we've got. We've made ourselves something from acrylic, my favorite material. And what does it do? Well, that plugs in there and that thread just pushes it into the back diameter. It does fit in there snugly, so it's not gonna fall out. There are not adequate dimensions to make this thing from the literature that I've been sent or I've been able to track down. So hopefully it's reasonably true to the lens, to the laser beam axis. Now this time, in the interest of being nice and consistent, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into this laser set mode down here. Enter. And I'm going to change that away from continuous. I'll turn it onto manual. And now I'm going to jump down to here and I'm going to put a 20 millisecond pulse. So I've got a consistent pulse that I'm firing. Now we turn the laser on, hold your ears. of white card here which got lots of china clay in it so it's not going to catch fire it just marks up nicely and we'll put that on the end of the machine here and that's about 150 millimeters beyond the end of that beam experiment you're around the noisy side of the machine now so you can see what's going the mark on now we've changed it now to 50 milliseconds and that's what a 50 millisecond pulse looks like now we're at 1.3 1300 millimeters away and we'll give it another 50 millisecond pulse nothing two three four five six seven eight nine 
10, 11, 12. Okay. So let me be fair about this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can't make it any bigger. It's not perfect, but I think you'll see clearly that these are not as far apart as they were before. We've got a much smaller uh, divergence in the beam between 1300 and 150. I think we can fairly comfortably conclude that that tube that I was sent by Cloud Ray, called a beam expander, is an expander and a collimator. That certainly answered quite a few questions for me and uh, I think it leaves the air fairly clear for when we start next time. So until then, thanks for your patience and time again.